Hello everyone, and welcome to this little video. Uh, this time, we'll be talking about the Spring 2021 uh, anime that are coming out. I believe that's correct. I always forget the seasons, but uh, you know what? It doesn't really matter. This is what we're talking about. So there's a lot of good ones out there, and this video is going to talk about all the ones that I'm going to be watching that I feel like I could watch to completion, you know? And who's to say down the road, a couple episodes in, I might get bored and discard them. But uh, for now, these are the ones that I plan on watching, okay? So I'm going to talk about a little bit about them and kind of move on to the next one pretty quickly. So first off, we have Aaron is indecipherable, or Aaron. Yeah, her, her name's kind of hard to pronounce. It's one that I've not seen before. It's A-H-A-R-E-N. Aharen-san is indecipherable. Anyway, it's about this uh, little high school girl who is a small, cute student. She has a very quiet voice, and she's very bad at determining distance and personal space. Um, so she uh, had bad experiences in middle school where she got too like, close to people, and she kind of got avoided because of that. And so in high school, she wants to do things differently. And so she's trying to avoid getting close and up front with everyone. You also have this guy here named Rido. And he is the person who's sitting next to her in class. He has a scary face, but he's really a kind kid who, uh, you know, wants to make friends and stuff like that. And his first opening act to do so is to become friends with the person sitting next to him, who is Aharen. I'm just going to call her Reina. That's her name, and it's easier to say. So... Yeah. So Reina and him, basically, they become friends by him picking up her eraser for her. Uh, and then she all of a sudden gets like really close, like inches away from his face with her face and starts like talking. And he learns very quickly that she cannot talk very loud. And he tries to do various things to understand her uh, and, you know, get closer and have friendship with her. It's, it's, a, it's a great comedy. Uh, the one thing I do not like uh, as much is it seems like it has kind of like a faded like color or art style to it. It's not as sharp and clean as some other you know, series and stuff are. So it kind of feels like there's like this like film of glossy, not glossiness, like uh, fadedness over the whole thing, you know. Um, but that being said, it was kind of adorable. It's kind of funny. Um, and Reyna is... Uh, the way the things she does is just kind of funny to me. But uh, yeah, definitely check this one out if it is indeed uh, something up your alley. It doesn't say it's a romance, so don't look forward to that, but look forward to the comedy between this guy who looks menacing and this small little girl who is very quiet. Look forward to that. All right. And up next, we have... Uh, the Executioner and Her Way of Life, also known as uh, Shokei Shoujo no Virgin Road. Um, I'm not sure why it's... The Japanese title is Virgin Road? I don't understand that since the word virgin doesn't come up in the uh, English translation at all. Uh, but who knows? Anyway, it's uh, Isekai, kind of? And when I say kind of, if you watch it, you'll kind of understand it. It's more of like a fantasy that happens to involve isekai. And man, first episode is a, a trip. Uh, but I don't think it's going to keep going down that way, judging by the synopsis. So anyway, it, it centers around this girl named Meno, the kind of brownish blonde haired girl here, uh, who is not an isekai protagonist. She's a priestess for this uh, church kind of thing. Uh, and man, I really want to say more about this, but I don't want to spoil anything. Just because uh, the first episode is great. It, it subverts your expectations. So it's an isekai without being an isekai for a couple of reasons. And you're going to be surprised by what happens in the beginning. What you think is going to happen isn't going to happen unless you've read the synopsis for this. Okay. So you're going to be thrown off course. It's one of those, like, uh, like 
Madoka Magica kind of scenario or like uh, some other like weird shows that take a weird turn that you're not expecting, right? It's one of those. And I personally think that that is going to be interesting. It's not often you see an isekai from this kind of perspective, from like the uh, perspective of someone who's not the isekai protagonist, you know? So it, it's going to be definitely. Anyway, it goes about her journey and the girl next to her who is uh, an isekai protagonist and their kind of journey together, apparently. Uh, I already saw some good action in the first uh, episode. The magic is interesting. And, you know, the sword play and stuff's also kind of interesting. And the characters, I like them so far. Uh, especially the, the Momo girl, who's like a, uh, an assistant to Menno. She is very fun, and I enjoy her. And it's going to be great. So, yeah, we'll move on to the next one now. Uh, I hope you check this one out, because it seems neat. All right. All right. The next one that we're going to talk about is actually uh, a manga that I read a little while ago. And I was surprised to see that it got an anime, but it's going to be fun. So it is called Trapped in a Dating Sim. The world of Otome games is tough for mobs, is uh, the title. A bit of a long one. I believe the source material is a light novel because of that. Usually when the name's long, it's a light novel thing. Anyway, it is a kind of funny isekai show. Where, you know, usually they get reincarnated into, like, fantasy worlds, and then they're like, I'm going to join the Adventurer's Guild and have a harem and stuff like that. Well, in this one, the main character is, like, an office worker who dies after playing an Otome game uh, by being forced to play it by his younger sister um, because of blackmail reasons. And because he plays it, like, in such a short period of time for so long... He uh, basically gets exhausted and then ends up dying. Uh, he actually like falls down some stairs and dies because he's exhausted and whatnot. But regardless, he dies. And he gets like reborn in this Sotome game, right? <clears throat> and he gets his memories back around like the age of like six or something like that. And then very quickly it speeds up to when he's older. But the thing about this Otome game is that it's a uh, matricidal, is, is that what it's called, when it's a female-led society where men are treated very poorly. Like, they don't have much, uh, like, say in anything. Uh, if you don't get married by 20, you're basically, like, just worthless and, and scummy. And uh, routinely, noble women will marry men and then send them off to war to die to collect their, uh, like, death money or whatever the hell it is. It's, it's a real mess of a society if you're a, a normal guy just hanging out. And he happens to be reborn as a character from, not from the game, because he's never heard of this character in the game at all. So the first thing he does is write down all of his memories about the game, what happens in it, yada, 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 so that maybe he can use it to his advantage. And uh, kind of go from there. And so the story is about him trying to live in this world. And uh, really, all he wants to do is just have a nice, quiet life and not, like, do anything crazy, right? But his, like, half-mother, who's like this, not half-mother, he's like this, Yes, mother thing that's like a, this noble woman who is married to his father. He's the son of a mistress, by the way. Um, his noble mother wants to be like, yeah, I'm going to sell you. I'm going to marry you off to this like 50 year old woman. And uh, basically, she just wants to, like I said, kill you and then take your money uh, from that. But he's like, uh, no, because first of all, she looks like a pig and uh, she's 50 years old. And uh, I'm like, 15 at this point, right? Uh, and so he's like, I'm just going to use my game knowledge, make money, and then go to this, like, academy where I can flirt with women and hopefully find one to, like, live a quiet life with, right? And so that's kind of what he does. So this isn't a story about, like, this main character wanting to amass power and, like, return to his home world or rule over everyone or even create a harem. He just wants to survive 
this crazy world and have a normal life, right? But because of the shit that's going on around him, he sort of has to not do that. He has to become, like, very overpowered <laughs> and broken like a main character is. And, oh, man, it's just such an interesting... I, I thought it was interesting anyway. Uh, he's got some funny parts as well. All that. He's got some interesting characters. And, oh, my God, there are mechs, so I am 100% into it. Uh, it's an interesting fantasy setting, too. Uh, it's like got floating islands and these like flying ships that transport you between them, as well as mechs and stuff like that. They also have firearms, which is also interesting. It's like a weird sci-fi fantasy kind of thing, you know? But I thought it was cool. It's definitely interesting up to where I've read the manga. The manga is still ongoing, so I have not finished the story. But uh, I'm curious to see what the difference is between the anime and the manga will be. Uh, so far, after episode one, it's followed it pretty decently. There's not too many deviations. And I don't really remember too much about the manga anyway. It's been a while since I've read it. So we'll see how it goes. I thought it was cool. So I'm going to keep watching it. It's a, it's a funny little isekai thing. But let's move on to the next one, shall we? Huh? Next up, we have this little game uh, show called Friends Game or Tomodachi Game. It is... Sort of like a, uh, uh, a death game uh, anime, except I don't think that there's any death involved. At least it doesn't seem that way so far. And from the vibe I got in the first episode, it seems like that's not going to be the case. Uh, essentially, this group of, I think it's like five friends, they get abducted, kidnapped, whatever you want to call it, and put into this like game area. Uh, where they have to play a game, because apparently one of them has like a 20 million yen debt. And the uh, amount is divided by, between all of them, so they each have five or four million, I think it is, four million uh, debt now. And if they win a game, their debt goes down by two million. So there's a variety of different games that they'll be playing. In the first episode, they only played one game. Um, but the thing is, it's a psychological kind of thing, because they're trying to pin friends against each other and make them i guess lose the game on purpose because then uh, it turns out there's like some extra stuff in the game where you can double your debt sometimes or all this other stuff but i'm really wondering if any of them actually have debt to begin with and if so which one it is it, it's interesting like that but i'm also wondering what's going to happen because in the first episode they show this like student group that's like monitoring everything and they call this group of friends group C which means there's at least two other groups playing this game so it, it doesn't seem like it's this death game kind of thing it seems like it's this it could be like a psychological um manipulation sort of like research see what these people will do when there's like all this money on the line kind of thing going on, you know, like that. Seems like that what might be what it's kind of doing, but it seems like it could be interesting. I definitely want to watch more of it. So I want to keep doing so. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, shall we? So the next one that we have here is I'm Quitting Heroing or Yusha Yame Masu. So it centers around former hero Leo, who decides to quit heroing and join the Demon King's army uh, for various reasons. In the first episode, it's basically just his reasons why and him talking to the Demon army and getting hired by the Demon army. Um, and essentially, his reason boils down to he, by himself, essentially destroyed and beat up the four generals and the Demon Lord. And as such, when he returned back home, everyone was, like, afraid of him and weary of him. They didn't treat him like a hero. They treated him like a monster. They put out bounties on his head to kill him, send assassins after him, all this kind of stuff. And the king ended up saying, okay, hey, you're banished from these lands because that's what the people want. They're afraid of you. Get out of here. Um, and all that kind of stuff, basically. And so the hero, after wandering around the human areas for a while, he uh, hears that the demon lord is recruiting to rebuild their army. 
And he says, well, fuck it, I'll go join them because these humans are bastards. And uh, so he goes and joins them, essentially. I thought the first episode was kind of cool. They have interesting characters. And it seems like it's going to be a case of humans bad kill them all. I hope it is because I, I love those kind of things where it's like these humans are like just horrible, like racist beings that like hate um, all the minor races. Like there's a beast man. There's like a, a succubus lady, a dragon kin guy. I don't know what the guy with like this, uh, this cloak has the fourth human general. And then the demon lord herself who, I don't know. She's like some kind of tech dragon or something like weird. I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, I'm hoping that the hero and the demons conquer humanity and essentially stomp out all their nonsense. It doesn't look like there's any other races on the human side. It's just humans, and then the Demon Lord army has all the other non-human races, is what I'm seeing so far. But I don't think it's actually going to be that, because it seems like it might just be Leo helping to rebuild the forces and not actually going on the offensive much because he's like the strongest human anyway, so no one else is going to be able to stop him. But it seems interesting. And uh, apparently Echidna, the demon lord, or demon queen, I guess, she doesn't actually want to like unnecessarily kill humans, so she has like a reason for conquering humanity or something like that. So I'm curious to find out what that reasoning actually is. But yeah, so this one will be interesting as well. And uh, I, I was thinking it might have been an isekai, but it's not. It's just one of those fantasy ones where uh, the hero is a normal human in this world and just decides, fuck it, I'm going to talk with the demons. It's always great. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, because there are quite a lot more to discuss. All right. Next up, we have, and I'm probably going to not pronounce this name correctly the first try, it's the Aimon. That might actually be close to pronunciation. Anyway, this one is one that I wasn't necessarily sure that I was going to like. And it's about this guy named Nagumu who returns home after like 10 years uh, to his family's sweet shop. And he's like, I'm going to, you know, take over because, you know, my dad's getting old and all that. And so he goes with the intention of doing that, but he meets this girl who his family has kind of taken in named uh, Itsuka. And essentially what happens is uh, her parents had like abandoned her or something like that. And so his parents are now taking care of her. Uh, and as such in like the last year that she's been there, she's basically become the like poster girl for the sweet shop. And they're like, she's going to be the successor of the sweet shop. And so they ask Nagumu to essentially be like a father figure for this girl um, while she, you know, grows up and, you know, he relearns the trade of the sweet shop stuff and whatnot. Because his parents are both older. They can't really keep up with a kid. They're more like grandparents than an actual, you know, parent and whatnot. And it seems like that's what it's kind of going to be. It's like a, a slice of life cooking kind of show, as far as I can tell. Um, not a whole lot to say on it. Um, I, I don't think I'm too big of a fan of the, uh, like, animation. Not, not necessarily animation, like the, uh, the coloration of it, I guess. Because they have these, like, weird, like, different colored parts of their cheeks when like they're trying to like emphasize um like lights shining i guess it's, it's kind of weird it throws me off a little bit it makes them seem really glossy and like shiny for some reason but uh, other than that it, it seems to be a cute little show uh so if you're looking for a nice little slice of life that's you know pretty tame pretty calm it's gonna be a cute and sweet story without any like romance stuff going on um Check uh, check this out. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, shall we? Hmm? Next up, we have RPG Real Estate, which is uh, a great name. I just want to throw it out there. RPG. I think it stands for uh, Rent, Plan, and Guide. If I remember correctly, they show the sign of it, the, uh, the business there. Uh, but anyway, this is a story about the pink haired girl moving to the big city and finding a house 
and then joining a real estate company, essentially. Uh, basically, the, the first episode is the main character, Tone, who is this little witch here, and she enters the city, looks around it, goes to the RPG real estate office, and has the uh, girls behind her, who are the employees there, show her around to a couple of houses, and she eventually finds an apartment to rent. Um, and kind of gets to know the other girls a little bit better. She's also an employee of RPG Real Estate who just got hired, and that's why she moved to the city to work there. So uh, the second half of the first episode is her showing around with the other girls, a uh, potential customer, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It seems like it's going to be kind of a cute show. Looks like it's going to be a, a fantasy slice of life. Um, so it's going to be kind of interesting. It feels like it, it might go the way of that, uh, that one anime from a couple seasons ago about the, the dragon trying to find a house, though, where if it's just going to be them showing people around to houses, and that's really all that's going to happen. It seems like it might be too boring for me, if that is indeed the case. So it might be one that I drop if it does not keep me entertained. But this one is cute girls doing cute things. Uh, whereas the dragon one was a dragon and a, uh, like, elf guy going around and doing weird stuff. So hopefully this one's better for me and I can uh, watch it all. But it seems like it's going to be an interesting little story. So, uh, yeah, if you want to see a kind of fantasy world where a wizard and some other gals like a warrior and a priest and then a little dragon girl who doesn't like to wear clothes um that sounds like it's interesting to you check out rpg real estate yeah let's move on to the next one shall we this one is the greatest demon lord is reborn as a typical nobody and it's well as the title uh describes it's about the demon lord Varvatos, who, uh, in his demon lord uh, world or body, whatever you want to call it, uh, basically he's so strong and powerful that you know he doesn't really have any friends because everyone's just you know swearing loyalty to him, and you know he's too powerful to make like friends and stuff like that, and so he uh, decides maybe I should just reincarnate start over as like a, a nobody and then I can make some friends. And so he does it. The mad lad does it, lads. And so after like maybe a minute or two of showing him in his past life, we then fast forward to him being a 10 year old boy with the uh, black or brownish hair. I forget. It's, it's black, right? Black hair and red eyes. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, and he wants to have friends. Why up until this point, uh, his parents have not helped him get friends when he was growing up as a wee lad. I do not know. But at 10, he still has no friends. So he's going around and, like, glaring at people and ordering them to be his friends and stuff like that. And, of course, all the kids are like, oh, fuck this guy. And they walk away because he has memories of his past life. But he has a chance encounter with the mayor's daughter, this uh, silver-haired elf. And uh, basically... He uh, straight up stalker modes her and keeps saying like, hey, be my friend, hey, be my friend, hey, be my friend, because the, the mayor's uh, friends with his parents. And so he's like, oh, this is fate. This girl is going to be my friend. And uh, so his new name is Ard, and <clears throat> the elf's name is uh, Irina. And so after some time in the first episode, they eventually do become friends. Because Irina has this complex about also being too powerful, and everyone else calls her a monster, but Ard is like, I'll be your friend, I don't care, we'll be friends forever. And then they're friends forever! And then right at the end of the first episode, it fast forwards to, I'm, I'm guessing, when they're around like high school age or something, and Irina's like, hey, let's go to the Academy of Magic. So from there, it's going to continue to be them in the Academy of Magic, I'm guessing. But already, Ard is, like, overpowered because between his previous life and this life, all the magic is, like, dumbed down. And so he's, like, using lost magic, as they call it. Uh, <clears throat> he's very, very strong. So, 
Anyway, he's probably going to try to make more friends. It, it seems to be a story about him trying to make friends and all that, but given the, uh, well, pictures, thumbnails and stuff, it's, it's going to be a harem kind of show. You know what I mean? Uh, there's apparently two main female characters and then a bunch of female supporting characters and like one or two guys who happen to uh, be there. So, yeah. It's an action fantasy. So, you know what? I'm cool with it. It's not like a, an isekai because it's technically just, I mean, a guy reincarnating into his own world again and doing it himself. It's not like he got hit by a truck and then is reincarnated. So it's, but anyway... Yeah, so if you're looking for, like, an overpowered former Demon Lord trying to make friends, this is your anime. Also, uh, it says Demon Lord, but he looked like a human in, like, his first life. And, like, the people who were worshipping him looked like humans. So I don't really understand why he was a Demon Lord. It feels like he was just a king. Maybe they called him a Demon Lord because he was so overpowered and, like, felt demonic due to his strength. But, yeah, anyway, that's all for this one. Um, I think there's still a couple more to talk about, so let's go on to them. This one that we have here is Dawn of the Witch. And it appears to be a spin-off series of the Grimoire of Zero, which uh, was an anime that aired back in 2017, I believe. And uh, you start by seeing the, the girl Zero uh, talk to this, like, the main character of the Dawn of the Witch in like a back alley. And you can tell it's her because she has silver hair and like a little like antenna thing on her head, even though she's wearing a hood and you don't really see her face very well. But anyway, after that like little meeting, uh, all of a sudden he's in an academy. He's the worst student because he can barely use magic. And uh, then he gets sent to this like uh, camp in the south. Where like they're having a, a village that has both sorcerers, people who don't use magic, um, because there was like a, a war that raged between the church and the witches that happened in the Grimoire of Zero, and now the war is over, but the South still is kind of prejudiced towards witches, so they're sending some academy folk there to kind of make it better, I guess. Um, that's what I got from it. And so the story seems to be about our main character and his struggles to learn magic or find out what he's good at or stuff like that. Um, anyway, it also has a, a mage named Rue Christie or something like that. Uh, and she is like a 300-year-old witch, the blonde-haired girl here, um, who ends up escorting the main character, uh, Stable, his name, to this village. And that's pretty much the first episode, is them starting to get escorted. And uh, right at the end, they get attacked by witch hunters. And uh, well, one of them does anyway. So, them. And that's kind of how it goes. So, it seems like it's going to be an odd story of magic and mystery. Uh, also, it should be mentioned that Stable doesn't really have any memories before the time that he was enrolled in the Academy. So I'm guessing, if I had to make a guess, it's something like his master, Zero, wiped his memories and enrolled him in the Academy so he can learn the basics of magic or something like that. And she had already taught him like advanced magic or something. I don't know. Something like that. And then it's going to be revealed that, you know, He's actually really amazing. But yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, curious to see what's going to happen. Curious to see how it ties in with uh, Zero and yeah, the Grimoire of Zero people. Because uh, the only reason I found out that it was the Grimoire of Zero was uh, because they showed this uh, like uh, polar bear-looking beast fallen guy who was in the Grimoire of Zero. And I was like, that guy looks really familiar. And then I looked it up, and yeah, it was indeed uh, a spin-off series of The Grimoire of Zero. I was like, oh, cool. Kind of familiar. Anyway, the animation's clean. It looks 
somewhat promising and uh, I'll be curious to see how it plays out. All right, then shall we go on to the next one, huh? Let us go ahead and do so. And now we have the Skeleton Knight in another world, which is an isekai. And honestly, I gotta say, the, uh, the opening, uh, just amazing. Like, it's probably the most hype one that I've seen so far this season. And, uh, like, goddamn, it really makes you, like, excited to watch the anime. And it, it's just great. So far, I think this might be my favorite anime this season. Granted, I've only watched one episode of each anime, and there are still a couple that have yet to come out. But, I mean, the rest of them that are not yet out uh, aren't exactly things that I would call my favorite. But this one, animation's good, premise is good, characters, great, amazing. Um, so anyway, uh, let's, let's back it up, talk about what the show is. So it's about this guy who we're going to call Ark, because that's the name he uh, has. He apparently falls asleep while playing a video game. And when he wakes up, he finds himself in the game world as his character called Ark. And he's equipped with powerful weapons and armor from his avatar. However, his character was also a skeleton. So thus, he is a skeleton now. And he discovers this when he takes off his helmet to drink from a river and sees a skeleton gazing back at him. And he's like, oh, right, I'm a skeleton. Anyway... So <clears throat> that's kind of how it is. So he's going to be like, I'm going to keep my full plate armor on as much as possible so that people don't get freaked out that I'm a skeleton, right? And uh, it is so good. Like, oh, man. He just, like, cuts down some bandits, just, like, murders some, like, orcs and some boars, cuts down trees with, like, a single swing of his sword, casts magic, teleports through the sky. It is... So much happens in the first episode that it's just hilarious and great. It is very, very nice. And uh, I think it's going to be one of my favorites, like I said. If not the best one so far this season. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I rather liked it. And I, I'm really excited to see where it goes next. Uh, it, it seems like it's going to be a quest of him just journeying through the world. So far, no huge conflict has arrived, such as him being like, oh, I'm going to go back home, or I got to kill a demon lord, or anything like that. A couple of characters were introduced, but it doesn't really have anything that's a huge conflict. Even the synopsis that uh, I read about it says uh, he's on a journey full of conflict and adventure. It doesn't really say there's anything like major that uh, is happening. But it's amazing so far. First episode in, it is a little rapey in the beginning as bandits descend upon um, some women, and then he just immediately like, cuts them all in half. Uh, it reminds me of kind of Goblin Slayer in that, uh, that effect, especially because the skeleton uh, knight's eye glows like blue when he does amazing shit, whereas Goblin Slayer is glowed red. Ah, it's just so good. I love it. I love watching an OP character like just destroy people oh, it's so good so good all right but i think that'll be all for this video right now there are like six other shows that i do plan on watching but they don't come out for another couple of days um one or two of them don't come out for one day one doesn't come out for like seven days and the one doesn't come out for 15 days and uh i figure <laughs> I'm not going to wait that long before I publish this video. And we're already at like 30 minutes now. So I figure we'll just do that. So the next ones that we'll be talking about are Spy X Family, uh, The Heart of Konichi Tsubaki, The Sakimori's Not Just a Cutie, Don't Hurt Me, My Healer, Summertime Rendering, and A Couple of Cuckoos, which I actually read the manga of and it was kind of weird but kind of funny, and uh, yeah. I also think I might have read a little bit of Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie. I seem to remember the pink-haired girl, but I don't know if that's because she just looks like uh, a character that I've seen before. 
Anyway, they all seem like they could be interesting. So we'll see how that goes here. And you'll expect that video in a couple of, couple of weeks, like I said. Cause, or maybe I'll just do the, uh, the ones that come out in like a day or two, which is Spy X Family, The Heart of Kenichi, Shikamori, and uh, the Healer one. And then the other two I'll do own videos for since it's like a week and like two weeks later, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. So until next time, everyone, catch y'all later. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.